Almighty Father Yahweh, Father, this is your servant, Cohen Priah Hawkins, Father, asking permission at this time, Father Yahweh, along with the men of your house, to come before you under the headship of our pastor and overseer, the great Kahan Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and through the authority of your son, Yahshua Messiah. And Father, once again, it's with great joy we to come before you this evening, Father Yahweh, thanking you for another great opportunity to, to gather together, Father Yahweh, and to study the, your laws and your prophecies. And we pray, Father, that you would bless us with the with understanding this evening, Father, that you will help us in our efforts in, in, in completely understanding these things that are coming forth from your house, Father. And we just pray that you would bless us in our efforts also in overcoming all sin so that we can, Father Yahweh, stand in unity with you and in unity with Yahshua and our pastor and overseer, the great Han Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and be counted worthy to serve you and your people forever. We do love you, Father Yahweh. We do praise you and thank you. And we do ask these things in unity, Father Yahweh, with the body of priests, through our pastor and overseer, the great Khan Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and Yahshua Messiah's name. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Everybody, please go ahead and be seated. And we're going to be continuing this evening in the book, There Is Someone Out There. And we'll actually be picking up here about page 217. And the chapter we're in, just uh, just a quick recap, the chapter that we're in right now is that gods make war with the saints. It's chapter 3. And so far in here we've, we've, we've gone over that Yahweh's way, you know, it, it's not readily accepted. It's, it's, you know, since the days of Cain it hasn't been readily accepted. Um, the house of Yahweh, and the house of Yahweh, in, in reality it's mankind, and, and the plan of Yahweh is just totally hated by the gods. And, you know, we see that, uh, you know, we see that this, this fight, you know, we see this first act of war, you know, was, uh, was what we saw arise between Cain and Abel. Now, Abel, remember, Abel was, was killed because of his righteousness, because he exposed, you know, he exposed Cain's way. He exposed Cain's sin. He said, if you do righteousness, will you not be accepted? You know, but sin is crouching at your door. You know, the desire to sin, that, that desirable aspect, what appears to be desirable, that which the serpent presented to Eve in the garden, that way of life, the way of the gods, appears desirable, but you must overcome it because there's nothing behind it but death and destruction. Well, of course, you know, we know the, you know, the historical account shows that, you know, Cain rose up and killed Abel. And it's, it, you know, it's been this way, you know, it's been this way throughout history. Anybody that has ever stood for, uh, that has ever been a part of Yahweh's plan, that's ever been with the house of Yahweh, uh, the apostles, the prophets, um, you know, they've all, you know, they all experienced this hatred. Um, Hebrews chapter 11 kind of gives us a rundown, gives us a rundown of the type of hatred, you know, that is experienced and that the gods exhibit toward anyone who will stand for any form of holiness. Um, the believers, remember, the believers were tortured. Uh, they had trials of cruel mockings. You know, they had, the trials were mockeries. You know, the judgments were already made up. The, the, uh, the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, Herodians, you know, they already knew that they were going to pass sentence. They already knew what the sentence was going to be, but they held a mockery of a trial, much like they do in the last days, just like they did with our pastor and overseer. You know, the same type of, you know, the exact same type of thing there. Uh, we saw, you know, the, you know, the, the apostles, the prophets, you know, the believers, they went through scourgings, they, you know, chains of imprisonment. You know, they were stoned, they were sawed in two, slain with the sword, they were afflicted, you know, they were tortured, they were cruelly treated. You know, this is all, this is how the gods have treated, and those who follow the gods have treated the believers. Now, this hatred, again, remember, is, is toward anyone that would practice any form of righteousness. And it didn't end. It, ha it continues, and it continues through this day. Remember Malachi Martin and the Keys of This Blood, how, you know, he outlined, you know, the, the, the nations that were going to have war waged against them. And the reason that they were going to have war waged against them, because of anyone who would not bow their knee to Mother Mary. Um, you know, in this war, you know, this, you know, this hatred and the, the, the violence and the threat of violence and, you know, the tortures and things like that. And that's one of the things that they used in the Dark Ages and with the Inquisitions. You know, they would, you know, it's not just the physical torture that they would put people through, but it was the mental torture. It was the mental anguish that they would put them through as well. 
you know, at detailing exactly what they were going to do and how they would use this particular instrument of torture against them. You know, to instill that fear in the heart, you know, that, if that fear in the mind. That's, that, that's what they did. And they used this to try to turn people and keep people from following the faith that was once, once delivered to the saints. And the gods, you know, the gods are the ones that move the people. They, they, they move the people uh, to be filled with this hatred and, you know, and through these influences. Um, and they influenced their followers to slaughter thousands of innocent children. Remember what took place in the days of Moshe. You know, when Moshe was born, the, you know, the gods influenced, you know, the Pharaoh to send out a, dec- a decree that all of the infants, all, and not just, you know, not just, not all of the infants, but all of the male infants between a certain age, you know, between certain ages, they were the ones that were to be killed. And why was that? Well, it was an effort to stop the plan of Yahweh. It was an effort to stop, actually, mankind from achieving what Yahweh desires them to achieve. So it's not just the hatred against, against the house of Yahweh, but it's, uh, it's hatred and it's hatred that's exhibited against all of mankind because the gods know that, that mankind is going to inherit these things. And it was also used, remember, this was also used in Yahshua's day uh, in, in an effect to cut off the prophesied mediator. That's what Herod did. Herod sent out that same decree, you know, to go out and, and to, to try to kill, to try to kill off the Savior, to try to kill off Yahshua, to prevent that mediator from coming forth. Well, on page 216, and that's kind of where we, that's kind of where we've gotten to this point, but you know, because of, of Yahshua's obedience to the laws of Yahweh, the gods were not able to prevent Yahshua from becoming, you know, the, 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 the high priest over the house of Yahweh. It was through Yahshua's obedience. You know, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahshua's obedience to the every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. And, you know, we see here in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 2, 10 through 14, it says, For it was fitting for him on account of whom we are all of as fitting for him on account of whom all uh, are all glory through whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to lead the prince of their salvation of, of their salvation to perfection through sufferings and we're going to see here in just a little bit that remember Yahshua learned obedience from the things which he suffered you know Hebrews shows that you know Yahshua experienced the the results and the hatred of what sin brought without ever having committed sin himself you know, he experienced the hatred. He experienced the violence. He experienced the, the scourgings. You know, the 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 cruel mockings, the the the, uh, the joke of a trial that he went through. He experienced all of those things, but he did that without ever having sinned himself. And yet, this is what is being brought upon the whole world at this time through the rejection of the law of Yahweh. This is why we see everything in the world the way it is. In 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, it says, For the gods of this world have blinded the minds of those who do not believe. You know, they've actually blinded them. They've hidden, you know, they've withheld the light from them. And if you remember what, light, what the light represents, the light represent, is, represents the laws of Yahweh. So the way that the gods have blinded the minds of those, they've withheld this light, is simply by saying, well, you don't have to keep those old laws. You know, appealing to the carnal mind, tickling the ears, telling the people what they want to hear that, you know, you don't have to be obedient to any of these things. You know, you have an immortal soul. Remember, that's what, that's what the serpent told Eve. She said, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have to obey these laws. You know, you're not surely going to die if you practice this, if you practice sin, if you break this law, you're not going to die, you're going to live forever. But you're going to have the knowledge of the gods. You're going to have this knowledge of both righteousness and evil. You're going to experience the thing Yahweh is hiding from you, the things he doesn't want you to have. I mean, you can, almost, you can hear the, the twisting of the scriptures, or the, the twisting of her words, you know, and, 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 how she, and how she hooked Eve into doing what she did. Now, in Hebrews 2, 15 through 18, it says, And deliver those who through... Who through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For truly, he does not take hold of Malachim, but he takes hold of the seed of Abraham. For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to Yahweh, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. You know, and this shows that Yahshua, Yahshua was a man. He had to be made like his brothers in every way. 
that was the only way he could qualify for the position of high priest. That was only the only way he could qualify for that. He wasn't some pre-existent God. The scripture doesn't support that. But yet that's what Christianity wants to, that's what they want you to believe. That he had some magical powers about him that enabled him to just, just become perfect, just to be perfect. So he wouldn't, you know, he wasn't just like, you know, like, okay, well, somebody dangled, you know, some scantily clad woman walked in front of him, you know, and he just, oh, that just doesn't bother me. You know, I mean, that he wasn't in any way tempted. But yet the scriptures show that he had to be tempted. He was made like his brothers in every way. He had the same desires that, 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 that mankind does. He had the same, you know, the same emotions. He, he had all of those things. But yet he had those things under control. He practiced self-control. He had all of those things under control. And he ruled his emotions. He ruled his body. He didn't allow his body to rule him. And this is the example that we need to follow. You know, we, we have to control our emotions. We need to be in control of our emotions and our thoughts. For, that, for, for, for in that he himself has suffered, being tempted and tested and tried, he is able to help those who are being tempted. You know, this is why we're allowed to go through certain situations throughout our lives. Because in allowing us to go through certain things, maybe some of us were incarcerated. Maybe some of us had an alcohol problem. Or maybe some of us had a drug problem. Maybe we had problems with, with fornication or adultery. Maybe we had, you know, any number of sins. And when we overcome those things, and we can help others overcome those things as well, because we can be the example. You know, we can sit there and show, well, this is what worked, this, this is how I was able to do this, or this is how these people here who have applied this program or who, who have applied these techniques, this is what they have done. They've applied these laws and they were able to overcome all of these things. You know, but again, you know, each and every one of us coming from different backgrounds, you know, I've, you know uh, a person who has never had a drug or alcohol problem, how can they truly help somebody overcome a drug and alcohol problem if they haven't been called out of that and haven't overcome that themselves? They're going to be a much more effective teacher being able to apply their experience and being able to relay their experience in overcoming to truly help those who are faced with that same trial. Now, in Hebrews 3, 1 through 6, it says, Therefore, holy brothers, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Yahshua Messiah. He says to consider, to consider the apostle, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, you know, which shows that what we're doing here in, 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 in striving to overcome and, and living the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program and living the laws of Yahweh, this isn't something that we do on a Sabbath and go home and, and go, go about our day, you know, go about our week, and we go ahead and do whatever we want to on, on, uh, for six days, you know, doing just whatever we want to do, practice whatever sin we want to, walk in and give a um, lip service of a confession, if we attend, if go to confession at all, but give a lip service type of confession and then put on a Sabbath face, you know, and act a certain way on Sabbath and then at sunset we go right back to the old habits, to the old, to the old thing. And that's, that's, that's not what we've been called to. You know, we're not, you know, the house of Yahweh, what we practice here, it's not a, you know, you, we've heard it, heard, heard it said, and I've heard it actually recently said, that what we're practicing here is not a religion, but it's a way of life. And if you've examined and if you've studied the laws of Yahweh as, you know, as being taught from our pastor and overseer, you know, we see that it is a way of life. You know, we are living, you know, we live this way 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Yahweh willing for all eternity. You know, this is what we are, and this is a profession. It is a profession. It's not a job. It's not a part-time job. It's not a hobby. It is a profession. You know, something that we are uh, that we take very seriously, and this is something that we're doing long term. That and again for the rest of our lives. Now, but we're told to consider to consider the apostle and high priest to consider this. Well, that word consider means to think about carefully. You know, it, it thinks, uh, to think about it carefully, really to think about it, to, to think of, especially with regard to taking some action. Okay, it's not just an empty thought, just looking at it and say, okay, yeah, 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 sure, it was about sin. Okay, I see that. Now what are we going to do with that? 
Do we just tuck that knowledge away and then go about our lives and, and keep practicing the foolishness that, that, uh, that we've been called out of? That's not what we're to do. But, you know, it says to think about, especially with regard to taking some action, to follow the direction, to follow the instructions that Yahshua gives us. To, to follow the instructions that, that the apostles give us and to repent, therefore, and be converted that our sins may be blotted out. Remember, Acts shows us that that's the only way that our sins can be brought out, that can, that the only way that they can be blotted out is to repent and be converted. See, it's a, it's a twofold thing. There's two things that, that have to be done. You can't have one without the other. But it also means to take into account, to regard or treat in an attentive way, to gaze on steadily or reflectively, you know, to think about these things, to see how can we, you know, how can we put these things, you know, you know, how can I do this? How, what is it that I need to do? Now, the, the, the kind of neat thing about this one dictionary that I'm, that I'm using, it has, you know, all these, it has the synonyms in here for this word consider. And it uses the words consider, study, it uses way, and it, t- it gives a discussion here on, on what this word consider truly means. Now, it says consider, study, or contemplate, or way means. Uh, way means to think about in order to arrive at a judgment or decision. Consider may suggest giving thought to in order to reach a suitable conclusion, opinion, or decision. Okay, to think about this. You know, we can see the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. We can see the STOP acronym jumping right out of here at us. You know, study implies sustained. Sustained, it means consistent. It doesn't mean a little bit here and a little bit here, but a sustained, a sustained, purposeful concentration and attention to detail. You know, it's something that we have to purposely do. It has it, 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 24 hours a day. You know, we're told, the scripture tells us, the apostle tells us to, you know, to be on guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, to be on guard 24 hours a day because Satan the adversary walks about like a lion seeking whom she may devour. She's waiting for a moment of weakness. She's waiting for us to put our guard down so she can jump in here, her, her ministers, her workers, her influences can get in and take hold and get in and try to influence us just a little bit, just, a, just, just like a wedge. Has anybody ever, ever uh, gone out and split wood? You know, you get a big old, you get a big old, uh, uh, a big old stump. You know, maybe the stump's about this big around, and here you are with an axe. Well, how in the world are you going to get that stump to split? How are you going to break it down? Well, you can take that axe, and you can hit it in the middle, but the axe is kind of going to get stuck. So what do you do? You take a wedge. Now think about these influences a wedge to break that stump down, to break down your resolve to keep the law of Yahweh. You take that, you take that wedge, and you put that wedge in that crack. And then you hammer at that, and you hammer at it, and you hammer at it. And what does it do? That wedge is shaped like this, right? So the more you hit it, the more force it puts on that stump, and it starts to slowly splinter and slowly break away. That's these influences, the, the influences that are out here. And this is how, you know, this is how, you know, Satan is going to get in there and how, how, how she is going to try to come between you or come between us and Yahweh. But it means a sustained, purposeful concentration and attention to detail. Way also implies attempting to reach the truth or arrive at a decision by balancing conflicting claims or evidence. You know, weighing the pros and cons. You know, if I do this, if I take this action, or if I do this, am I going to bring harm to myself? Am I going to bring harm to somebody else? Am I going to bring harm to the environment? You know, weighing the pros and cons. You know, that STOP acronym again, STOP and THINK. You know, consider our options. What are we doing? What are we thinking? What, what are our actions? You know, what does the law teach us? And then we proceed with that right choice once we make that, you know, once we come to that conclusion. But this is what we're to do. You know, we're to consider the apostle and high priest who was faithful, who was faithful to him, Yahweh, and who begot him just as Moshe was faithful in all of Yahweh's house. Now, this one was counted worthy of more glory than Moshe, since he who prepared the house of Yahweh had more honor than the house of Yahweh. Now, every house is built by someone, but the one having ordained all things is Yahweh. Now, Moshe was truly a faithful manager in all the house of Yahweh and all the house of Yahweh as a testimony to those, uh, to those things uh, which were to be spoken after that the Messiah as a son is over Yahweh's own house, whose house we are, 
if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end. Now, notice here, this is conditional to be a part of this house, to be a part of the house of Yahweh. Yeah, now, look here, it says here, it says the Messiah as son is over Yahweh's own house, whose house we are. If, you see that little two-letter word there, if? Boy, that has some major implications. But yet, if we're not careful, we'll read right over the top of it. If, that, that, that means that that shows it's something conditional. It shows it's dependent upon us doing as we're instructed. So, and that's what it says here. If, it's conditional. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope, being firm until the end, no, not falling to influences, not turning to the right or the left. And this is also why that there is no hope outside of the house of Yahweh, because nowhere else on the face of the earth are you going to find the laws of Yahweh taught. Nowhere else are you going to find Yahweh but here at his house. In Hebrews 5, 9 through 10, it says, uh, well, again, you know, if, uh, if we look at verse 8, it shows, Yahshua learned, remember, Yahshua learned obedience from the things which he suffered, then being perfected. So he had to go through the things. He had to go through all of those things which he suffered because that was part of, the, that was part of him being perfected. That was, part of, uh, that was part of the sealing in his mind, you know, just as it is with us, that we don't want any part of this world. We don't want any part of sin because we see the harm that it brings. Then being perfected, he became the causer of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. Called by Yahweh as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of Melchizedek. Now, the second part here and the next portion here that we're going into is why the Holocaust in this present century? Now, this actually takes, this, this, this discussion here of why the Holocaust in this present century, um, it actually takes, you know, a, a several, several, several pages here. Um, and we're, we're, we're definitely not going to be able to get through it all this evening. But we'll sure, uh, we'll sure get, a, get a start at it here. But why the, why the Holocaust in this present, uh, present century? Pastor shows here, he says, It is clear that Yahshua established the house of Yahweh once again through Yahweh's 613 perfect and righteous laws, just as Moshe had done thousands of years before. Many people were converted to Yahweh's life, to Yahweh's way of life during that era because of the faithful and diligent work Yahshua and his 12 apostles did in preaching and publishing the laws of Yahweh. And it's, we see the same parallel going on today. You know, through the preaching and the publishing of the laws of Yahweh today, through the, the, the constant teaching that goes forth from this house, either in, uh, in, written, in written form, through the books and through the booklets, through the Prophetic Word magazine, through, uh, through the newsletters, uh, through the sermons. Sermons are available for, for download. They're available, available to be listened to now 24 hours a day. You know, the radio broadcasts, radio broadcasts are available 24 hours a day. Now, I remember a pastor years ago said that he would, he would love to be able to go, you know, to be able to teach and preach for 20, you know, 24 hours a day. And this was actually even before, and I think, I think that was even before they had the auto reverse cassette tapes. You remember those? Remember the cassette player that you could get? You put a tape in it and you just let it go. And he had, had an auto reverse that so got to the end of the tape and it'd back up and it'd go the other way. And so you could play both sides of the tape and it would do that continuously over and over and over and over again. And that was before, that was even before CDs came out, MP3 players and all of that. Now, I mean, the, I mean, the technology is unbelievable. The amount of, you know, you know, the amount of information and stuff that we have available at our fingertips. You know, and, and it was all done. It was all created. Yahweh allowed all of this to come about for our use in these last days. Now, it's also been perverted by the world because they use it for their purposes. They use it as influences to draw people away, to entertain the people, to keep their minds off of what's important and to just, again, you know, just to tickle the ears. You know, this is, you know, this is what the world does, but it, it, it takes a lot of effort. It takes effort on our part to not succumb to those influences and to put our mind and our, mind and our concentration in, in the areas that, that is, is really, truly going to be beneficial to us. And the only thing that really is truly beneficial to us uh, you know, is, is, is this constant flow of oil that comes forth from this house, this golden olive oil. You know, this is, this is you know, you've heard the saying, you can't take it with you. 
you know, all of these physical things that are in the world, you know, we, you, you, the, when people die, you know, they leave them. Uh, relatives fight over them. You know, people fight over them. They fight over land. They fight over heirlooms. They fight over silver and gold. They fight over all of those things. But what's the one thing that we take with us? What is it we take with us? We take our character, and we're going to t- we take our knowledge. Everything that we everything that we've ever done, the, the the knowledge that we've put into our into our minds, you know, the the effort that we put in overcoming, all of that is being recorded, and it's being stored in an area in the body that cannot be destroyed. You know, the, I mean, they're, 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 you know, fire isn't going to destroy it. A nuclear bomb isn't going to destroy it. And that's what Yahweh is going to use. That is what those whom Yahweh gives the authority and gives the power to resurrect the dead, that is where they're going to be resurrected from. They're going to be resurrected and rebuilt from the information that's contained in that little pterygoid that sits in the back of the head. And then all of that knowledge that we've ever attained, everything that we've ever put our mind to do, that is going to be with us. So the one thing that they, the one thing that, that, that can't be taken with us, that can't be taken from us, is our character and what we have done with our lives. What type of person have we become? So Yahshua knew. So Yahshua here, it, Pastor shows that Yahshua knew from the prophecies that the gods would influence their followers to come against Yahweh's house again. To come against Yahweh's house again, as they had done so many times before. So, before he sent his 12 apostles out, before he sent his 12 apostles out into the world to preach the message of the kingdom of Yahweh, Yeshua warned them of the severe persecution that they would face, saying that they would be hated by all religions of the world and killed by them. Once again, the gods would completely destroy Yahweh's work, the house of Yahweh and Yahweh's holy name with it and would be so completely eradicated that they would remain unknown and forgotten for centuries. In Matthew 10, 16 through 22, we see this, we, we see these, this warning here that, that, that comes forth from Yahshua. In, uh, in verse 16 here, it says, Behold, I send you out like sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men. For they will hand you over to councils and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for my sake, as a testimony against them and the Gentiles. You know, notice why that they were brought before them. They were brought, they were brought before them, you know, because they stood for righteousness, because of the way they conducted themselves, because of the, of the holy laws that they stood for. But when they hand you over, do not worry what you are to speak or how you will say it, for it will be given to you in that same hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speaks, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks through you. You know, and, and again, you know, this goes through, you know, what is it that we put into our mind? Remember, the laws of Yahweh, that is the Spirit of Yahweh. For it is not you who speaks, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks through you. And brother will hand over brother for death, and the father, the child, and children will rise up against their parents and cause them to, to be put to death. And you will be hated above all men for my name's sake, but he who endures until the end, the same, you know, they will be saved. In Luke 10, 3, it says, Go your ways. Behold, I send you out like lambs among wolves. And then in Matthew 24, 9, it says, Then they will hand you over to be afflicted, and they will kill you. And you will be hated above all people for my name's sake. So you can see why the world hates, the, hates Yahweh, they hate, why they hate the house of Yahweh. You know, it's the same reason that Cain hated Abel. It's no different. It's the same thing. The pastor says here, he says, I highly recommend, highly recommend you obtain the books, uh, the books, The Lost Faith of the Apostles and Prophets and The Mark of the Beast, Volumes 1 and 2. These books show in detail how the gods make war against the saints of Yahweh who bring forth Yahweh's laws. So I went ahead and I've got, uh, I got my copy of The Lost Faith of the Apostles and Prophets. And on page 99, it, it talks about it talks about um, and it talks about the persecutions, about the persecutions that came forth from the house uh, that came forth against the house of Yahweh and against the believers. And there were a total of of ten persecutions. And I want to read here a little bit about this tenth persecution to see to just to kind of bring to to mind of you know and Yahweh willing to bring to to bring to mind. Number one, who was bringing it forth? Who was bringing it? Why they were bringing it? 
and, and what the ultimate result of that was. But on page 99 of the, of the book, The Lost Faith of the, the Apostles and Prophets, History and Prophecy, it says here, under the 10th persecution, it shows the last persecution of the house of Yahweh as a living organization came in the reign of Diocletian. Now, the, the Diocletian, he was the 46th emperor of Rome. So notice who he was. He was an emperor. He was the emperor of Rome. So, he, you know, he was one of the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes. He was one of the popes, you know, who ruled from 284 to 305 CE. This 10th persecution was also the most severe coming upon the house of Yahweh within 50 years, within 50 years of the seventh persecution that took place during the, uh, in the reign of De uh, Decius in 249 to 251. So, uh, so within 50 years, you had the, the, the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth persecution. So you had four, you had four um, attacks against the house of Yahweh, against the believers. And the end result of that, as we're going to see here, um, we're, we're going to see what the end result of that was, but the end result, as we've already, as we've already kind of seen, it was the the, the completely uh, wiping out of the house of Yahweh as an established organization. It, it was, for all intents and purposes, it was completely wiped out. It was dead. But Diocletian instituted the ruling system of the dominant during his tenure. Rome ceased to be the capital of the empire. The emperor became an autocrat and for all purposes was considered as a god and was addressed as dominus or lord. So you can see here the elevation now of the emperor to the status of a god. Okay, The principal cause for this final violent persecution starting in 303 CE was the refusal of the believers of the house of Yahweh to show their loyalty to the emperor by worshiping him, by worshiping him as a god as the formal ceremonies of the imperial cult which at that time was the Mithraic worship of the unconquered sun demanded. So this was sun worship. Remember, this was, this was Constantine. This was also, Constantine was a member. He was also a worshiper of Mithra as well. Now, although it is true that Diocletian was primarily interested in reviving the ancient pagan cultures, it says the 10th tenth, tenth persecution... Oh, well, I back up here. Now, let me, I missed something that was, uh, was pretty... The grounds for the persecution. You know what the grounds of the persecution were? It shows it was purely political. The grounds of persecution during that 10th persecution were political. You know, you look and, and, and you know, you look at the, at the at historic, you know, you look at what's just taken place with the house of Yahweh in, in just in recent history here within the past few years, you know, you look at the persecution and the rest of our pastor, you know, there were no laws, there were no laws of the land that were broken there. There was, there was absolutely nothing that, there was nothing that was broken there, but that was a purely political act by the, those who were in power trying to get rid of the house of Yahweh, trying to break up, to, trying to smite the shepherds so the sheep would scatter, trying to instill fear in everybody who was here, just like they did back in these persecutions, trying to destroy this last day's prophesied work. But they failed, and the prophecies show that they will fail, that, that, that this work will not be allowed to be put in the grave again that any efforts that they have to try to destroy this work are going to fail. Plain and simple. It will not succeed. But it says the 10th persecution was the most severe. Diocletian, by successive decrees, one after another, in order to break the heretical believers who would dare oppose the official worship. So again, remember, remember what, remember in Daniel, remember in Daniel chapter 7 verse 25, remember the, the, the many laws that were instituted. Remember he would speak great words against Yahweh. That was the, that was the many laws that were enacted to turn the believers into criminals. Well, this is the same thing that Diocletian did here. He, he said, all places and assemblies, all places of assembly for worship were to be destroyed. All Bibles were burned. All believers were deprived of civil rights in the empire. You know, all believers in the palace were sold as slaves. All deacons and elders to, uh, were to be arrested and compelled to sacrifice to the Roman gods. And all believers, whether clergy or not, were also compelled to sacrifice to these gods. Now, during the reign of Diocletian, Pastor shows us here, he says, Satan set the scene for the death of the house of Yahweh. During Diocletian's reign, unless one bowed down and worshipped the Mithraic religion of the unconquered son, that one was immediately branded as a heretic and as one who had committed treason against the Roman Empire. When all places of worship were destroyed and all Bibles were burned, the house of Yahweh could then only rely upon their memories, could only rely upon their memories to bring forth the word of Yahweh. 
Imagine what would have taken place if people didn't study. How easily that how easily that they would have fallen. It says when the elders and deacons were st- were, were uh, still among the people of Yahweh, the way of Yahweh was still brought forth. They remembered and recollected the righteous things Yahweh had taught the people. Progressively, Diocletian's persecution became more severe. All believers were deprived of their civil rights in the empire, and those who might have been in the palace were sold as slaves. The, the Roman Empire, uh, one would certainly say, was not a place where religious freedom abounded. You know, Diocletian perceived this heretical worship was still being practiced in his empire and then took the following step. And then that was when the elders and the deacons were arrested and compelled to sacrifice to the Roman gods. With the leaders out of the way, with the leaders out of the way, Satan knew that the house of Yahweh would fail. Yahshua prophesied in Matthew 26, 31 and Mark 14, 27 to smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But first, Yahshua, it shows, pastor shows first Yahshua, the chief shepherd, was sacrificed. Then the righteous apostles were also shepherds of the house of Yahweh were killed and all other leaders of the house of Yahweh were systematically eliminated. There were no leaders and the flock of Yahweh was scattered throughout the Roman Empire. It was then a very easy matter for Diocletian to finish off his last edict. All believers, whether clergy or not, were compelled to sacrifice to the Roman gods. Then the only alternative to sacrificing the gods of Rome was death. There was no other choice. You know, you're either going to do this or you're going to die. You know, by the time the tenth persecution was accomplished, what Yahshua had established as the group of believers under the authorities of the apostles called the House of Yahweh was dead and as, a, as an established religious organization completely fading from sight until the House of Yahweh was reestablished in the last days according to the prophets. So there was a time period, and we're going to see this uh, as we continue in, the st- in our studies here, we are going to see here how, you know, we're, we're going, and we'll, we will examine that Again, I don't think we're going to get to it. This, I know we're not going to get to it this week. Um, but we're going to see exactly this, exactly how it was prophesied that the house of Yahweh would be wiped out, how it was wiped out, and when it would be reestablished and where, and, and the prophecies are going to be covered in detail. Now, um, and we already saw here in Daniel 7.25 how these great laws, um, these many laws were, were, were passed. Now, in Psalm 56, 1 through 5, it says, Be merciful to us, O Yahweh, for man pants after us to destroy us, fighting all the day man oppresses us. Now, you know, you, when you think of a panting dog, and when, when they say they, they, uh, the, that man pants after us, that just shows the, that shows the, um, um, the, the word pant. It actually means to feel a strong desire for, to yearn eagerly for. You can see the zeal, and, 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 and just the zeal that, um, those who brought the persecution went after the believers. It wasn't a casual thing. I mean, they, I mean, the, the, the influences of the, of, of the, of the leaders at that time, you know, the influences of the leaders, I mean, they would whip the people into a frenzy. I mean, just, just really, you know, build them up to where all they wanted to do was go out and go out and just take them completely off the face of the earth. And this is, again, this is the same type of thing that we see that takes place through the news media today. You know, we see it through the, uh, we, you know, we saw it through the, uh, uh, the news reports and through the, uh, you know, through the unrighteous and the, and the, and the untruthful reporting that, that, that went on, um, you know, over the past several years. You know, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to stir the people up to come against the house of Yahweh and to come against anyone who would stand for righteousness. This is what they're doing. And it continues today. You can see it when you, when you step back and when you look at it. But it says, our enemies have, have gaped on us all the day, for there are many who would devour us. You know, they, you know, they, um, in the day, in the day we're afraid, we confide in you. And you, Yahweh, we praise your law. And you, Yahweh, we have trusted. We will not fear for what can flesh do to us. There is not a single thing that any person, any organization, it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter which police force. It doesn't matter which court. You know, it doesn't matter which army. They cannot do a thing. They cannot touch this house or anyone in it unless Yahweh allows it. And that is the importance of making sure that we stay. This is the, this, 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 we want to make sure that we do not allow ourselves to be cut off from Yahweh. 
Because if we allow ourselves to commit sin, if we get caught up in sin, if we get caught up in iniquity and sin, that separates us from Yahweh. That cuts us off from that protection. In, in these last days, and because in these last days, as the apostle showed us, perilous times would come. And that word perilous, when you look at them, it's not just, oh, a little bit of danger. I mean, it's extreme danger. I mean, look up, I mean, I mean take a look at that word perilous and see just how severe it is. And, and we, we, don't, we don't want to find ourselves without Yahweh's protection in these last days. But in you, Yahweh, we praise your law. In you, Yahweh, we have trusted we will not fear. For what can flesh do to us? All the day they twist our words against us. Are there, uh, against us are, are their thoughts for evil. And again, you know, this is, this is exactly, you know, what, we're, what we see going on. Now, the scriptures above depict very accurately the twisted reasoning of those belonging to the world's religions, Christian or otherwise, who are not prophesied of by the prophets. These religions claim to be righteous. You know, well, they don't use the word righteous. They use other words in there. They don't want to use the word righteous. Because Deuteronomy 6.25 tells us very clearly what righteousness is. But they don't want to use that word. But they, they claim to be righteous while they fight against the laws of Yahweh written in every Bible. They also claim that the persecution suffered by the prophets, the apostles, and the true Savior would never occur in today's society. You know, I mean, I've, I've heard people say, you know, well, we've heard people say, you know, well, if I was living in the days of Mo, Moshe, if I was living in the days of Yeshua, I wouldn't have turned against him. You know, I would have followed him. I would have followed everything he said to do. Well, that's what goes forth from this house. That's what the last day's witness does. He teaches the exact same thing that Yahshua Messiah taught. But let me remind you, Pastor says, of the millions of Hebrew people who were persecuted and killed by devout God-worshipping Christians just 60 years ago because they simply kept the fourth of the Ten Commandments. You know, the persecution readily comes forth with anybody that tries to keep the Sabbath. Try getting a job in the world. Well, you gotta work on, you've got to work on Sabbath. You've got to work Friday night. You can have Saturday day off, but you've got to work Friday night until midnight. Come on, it's only a couple hours. Is it really worth not having this job? Is it really that important? You can still get up. You still have time to go to services. I mean, you can see the influence. You can see how they could try to influence you. But this is the type of twisting. This is the type. This is the, all the day they twist our words and their thoughts are for evil. Anything to try to separate you from Yahweh. Although they don't, know, they don't realize that's what they're doing, but that's exactly what they're being influenced to do. Now, the same brutal hatred and persecution is still part of today's society. In 1993, the U.S. government was responsible for one such display, according to the reports that we've seen. Members of the religious group in Waco, in, in Waco Texas, were burned alive merely because they were, and they were hated for keeping the feast days spoken of in the Holy Scriptures. And I don't know how many people remember that, but that was the, uh, um, I think that was the Branch Davidians. Um, down in Waco, and that siege lasted, I can't remember how many days it was, I'm saying 40, 50 days, something like that, 43, 46, something, something along that lines. But the end result of that, I mean, the, the end result, and they, they, would, uh, they, they, they actually had banners hanging. They had a banner hanging kind of like we see out here, you know, when we see coming up into the parking lot now. You know, but they had a banner over there stating about keeping Passover. You know, that's, that, that's what they were trying to, you know, that's what they were, that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to keep, they were trying to keep the feast. But we see here that the nature of man has not changed. You know, man, man's nature hasn't changed. It hasn't changed for 6,000 years. You know, that same hatred that was shown to them, that is being shown to us, you know, was, was, was shown to Abel by Cain. Now, at the time of the Waco murders, uh, let's see here, the nature of man has not changed, neither has the nature of the gods. They are the same as they have been for 6,000 years that mankind has lived on the earth. At the time of the Waco murders, Bill Clinton was president and Janet Reno was the attorney general, and both of them took responsibility for the church killings, but are the leaders the only ones to blame when the citizens vote them into office? Pastor says, what could possibly possess anyone, especially in today's society, to destroy a religious group and murder its members, its men, its women, its children included. It is the same thing that possessed Cain to kill his brother Abel. It's the exact same thing. 
In Matthew 5, 10 through 12, it says, Blessed are those. Remember, this is the attitudes, the be beat- the attitudes, the be attitudes. You know, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of Yahweh. And so we see that, you know, if we're, if we're going down the road, if we're driving down the road and it's a speed limit 70 miles an hour and we're going 90 miles an hour and we get pulled over by the, by the police, you know, we're, you know, we get pulled over because we're speeding and, you know, can we yell, well, I'm being persecuted because I've got a white buffalo in my back window. I'm being persecuted because of that. No, you were speeding. You were speeding. Now, if the speed limit is 70 miles an hour, you're doing 68 and you get pulled over, okay, now we might have a different story if everything else is right. You know, if we don't give them a reason. And that's the, that's the thing we have to be very, very careful of. Don't give the authorities any reason. Don't draw attention to ourselves. Don't give them any reason to stop us. Yeah, make sure your headlights are working. Make sure your taillights are working. Make sure your car's inspected. Make sure it's up to date. Make sure you've got tags. You know, make sure you're up to date on your insurance. Make sure that you've got that because they can run your license plate and see whether or not you have insurance. And then they can use that to pull you over. So, you know, we just have to be extremely careful. But blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of Yahweh. Blessed are you when men will revile you and persecute you and say all men are evil against you falsely for my name's sake. You know, these are things that are not brought upon ourselves. We don't bring these things. We don't bring this persecution upon ourselves. This is what comes against us because of what we stand for. Because we stand for perfect righteous character. We stand for the laws of Yahweh. We stand for Yahweh. Now rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for greatest is your, is your reward in heaven, for in the same manner they persecuted the prophets who were before you. In Yachanon chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 20. Yachanon 3, verse 20 here. It says, For everyone who practices evil hates the light, and neither comes to the light, for fear his deeds would be exposed. Now, you know, think about what we're talking about with Cain and Abel. You know, you know Cain's sin... Cain's sins were brought to light by Abel. Well, everyone who practices evil hates the light. They don't want to be told. They don't want to be told that, uh, you know, that what they're practicing, you know, the, that what they're practicing is, is wrong. They don't want to be told that they're committing sin. They don't want to be corrected and, and, and told that homosexuality, that bestiality, that, that, that sodomy, they don't want to be told that these things are wrong according to the scriptures. They don't want to be told that, well, you know, you're, you're, you're consuming that, un, you're un, consuming this unclean, this unclean fish, this, you're eating this catfish, you're eating these shellfish, you know, you're doing all of these things. It's no wonder you're sick. You know, they don't want that because everyone who practices evil, they hate the light and they don't come to the light for fear that their deeds would be exposed. Now, again, you know, we know what the light is, right? Psalm 119, 105 says, your law your law is a lamp to our feet, right? And a light to our path. Your word or your law is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. In Yachanon 15, 18 through 25, shows again, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, then the world would have loved its own, but because you are not a part of the world, but because you are not part of the world, for I have chosen you to be out of the world, for this reason the world hates you. You know, it's because we don't conduct ourselves in the way, in the manner that worldly people conduct themselves. You know, they're, they're, you know we're not going to have worldly friends because we have nothing in common. You know, worldly people, what do they want to do? They want to go out and they want to party on, on, uh, on Friday night. They want to they go out and party on Friday night. They want to do all manner of things on, on Sabbath day. You know, they want to do all of these things. Where is our heart? What is our desire? You know, our desire is to serve Yahweh. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we come to the Sabbath. Our desire is to serve Yahweh and to serve one another and to learn what it is that we need to learn so that we can go forth, as the banner says there, and teach what we've learned. But it says, remember the word that I've said to you, a servant is not greater than his ruler. A servant will never be greater than his ruler. You know, there is no way that we are ever, ever, ever 
ever, 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 ever going to be above our pastor and overseer, Yisro Hawkins. We will never do, we will never attain that. We will never attain that. You know, there is no way that anybody is ever going to go above Yahshua Messiah. It will never take place. A servant, is, a servant is not greater than his ruler. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. You know, if these things came against Yahshua, why, why would we be any different? You know, we're conducting ourselves, we're striving to conduct ourselves in the same manner that he did. You know, we're striving to take on that same character that he did. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all of these things they will do to you because of my name, for they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have had their sins revealed. But now they have no cloak or covering for their sins. You know, we didn't have, we didn't know what our sins were. Before we came to Yahweh's house, before we were called into the house of Yahweh, we didn't know what our sins were. Because we were never taught. We didn't have a teacher to tell us what sin was. But when we come to Yahweh's house, we have a loving teacher that tells us what sin is and the harm that sin brings. And he pleads with this and he, and, and, and he begs us to overcome this foolishness. Now, he doesn't get up here and get on his hands and knees and, oh, please, please, please. But he come, he says, come, let us reason together. I'm reasoning with you. What reasonable person, why would anybody, you know, want to practice something that is going to cause them death? I don't know of anybody here that would intentionally go up and grab a hold of a red hot stove. I don't know anybody that would, because that is going to hurt. You are going to get burned and you're going to, you could, depending on how long you are in contact with that stove, you could permanently disfigure your arm, your hand, or whatever, and permanent, lose permanent use of it. You know, I don't know anybody that would do that. And, and, and you know, it's, you know, pastor gets up here and he explains these things. He explains these things to us. He takes the, the, the cloak. He takes, he, he, he takes things that, that, that seem complicated. And you've heard him, you heard him say that, you know, the, you know, the things that he's going over now are somewhat complicated and, and they're built upon lessons that we've had previously that were complicated but yet he brings those things to us in a manner which are easily understood and that's the sign of a great teacher the sign of a great teacher is somebody that can take something that is extremely difficult to understand and explain it so anyone can understand it that's the sign of a great teacher and that's how we need to become you know we need to strive to you know to take on that same you know characteristic of a teacher and the only way we can do that is to go back and rehearse the things that we've been taught. Why? So we can do like the banner says, to go forth and teach what we've learned so that others can receive the same benefit that we've received. And we've received tremendous benefits from everything that pastor has taught us, from, from everything. You know, look at the health. Look at, look, at, look at how much better our health has gotten. Look at how much better our relationships have gotten with our, with our families, with one another with our children. You know, look how much better look look how much better life is since we've put these things to use in our lives and have practiced them and studied them and practiced them. You know, we see it from feast to feast. You know, we see the progress. And you hear Pastor he talks about the progress, you know, how the love has grown. I mean anybody that has been here for any length of time you know, can look back in the in in, in uh, you know five, ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Some of us have been some of, some of us have been here a little longer, you know. But they can look back and they can see, you know, how the people conducted themselves and how relationships were in the beginning when we first came. And as each feast progresses, you know, it keeps getting better and better and better and more peaceful and more and, and you know it's you know it's that. Type, same type of thing that's going to take place in the community, the same place it's going to take in the towns, in the cities, in the states, in the countries, in the nations, you know, everywhere. 
Everywhere is going to benefit just like we're benefiting now, except on a much larger scale. I mean, it's, a, it's, an, it's an awesome work that, that's put before us, and we have the opportunity. We've been called to be a part of that. But if I had come and spoken to them, they would not have had their sins revealed, but now they don't have any cloak or covering for their sin. He who hates me also hates my father. And if I, if I had not done among them the works which no other man did, they would not have had sin. In other words, they wouldn't have known. But now they know. But now they have both seen these works and have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill, to fulfill what is written in the scriptures, they hated me without a cause. You know, what, you know why would somebody, you know, why would we hate somebody uh, for keeping us from doing something that's going to bring harm to us? There's no hatred there. I mean, there, that, that's, not a, that's not a hateful act. That's a very loving act. But the gods have the people influenced and whipped up in such a frenzy and they have them in, in such a, you know, in, 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 in the minds have been, have been so twisted through the rejection and through the teaching uh, that comes forth from this world, you know, that they, you know, that the, 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 their thinking is just totally, it's just totally off. And in first Kepha 4, 4, 12 through 14, it says, Beloved, don't be amazed. Do not be amazed concerning the fiery trial which you must undergo in order to be tested as though some alien thing were befalling you. He says, don't be amazed at these things. You know, as, as this fiery trial, it's severe, it's intense. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's something that's severe, it's intense, it's verbal. It's, uh, it can be a verbal attack. It can be, uh, you know, irritated, angry. I mean, it's, it, it's you know, a fiery trial. It's something... You know, it, it's something that is, you know, it's very severe. But rejoice. When these things take place, they'll rejoice in the fact that you are partakers of the Messiah's sufferings. You know, because he suffered in the same way. And it's for our benefit that we go through these things. Although it doesn't seem like it at the time that we're going through them. Sometimes it's a little hard to see. Why do I have to go through this? You know, but in the end, you know, in hindsight, that we see the benefit. But rejoice in the fact that you're partakers of the Messiah's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, that you may also be glad with exceeding joy. For if you are reproached for the name of the Messiah, blessed are you, for Yahweh's spirit of glory rests upon you. In 1 Kepha 5, 8 through 10, we're told, Be sober and be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom she may devour. And it says to resist her. The apostle tells us, resist her by remaining firm in the faith. So we see how he resists the devil how we resist the adversary, how we resist the influences. We remain firm in the faith. We stand in our place, and you know, we stand in our place because Satan is trying to... Do, she will use whatever she can to get your mind off the work of Yahweh. She's going to, take, she's going to use whatever she has at her disposal. Is it going to be a fiery trial? Is it going to be something that's, that's, that's uh, uh, you know, is it going to be something that's, that's, that, that is very extreme to us? Or is it going to be something as subtle as entertainment? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's something like was used, like we read about with the persecutions. If it was, if it was something that would cause the, um, that would instill fear. You know, if you do this, you're going to lose your job. If you keep this, if you keep this feast, if you go to the feast, you're going to lose your job. You know, if, you know, if you keep going up to the house of Yahweh for services, I'm taking the children and I'm leaving you. You know, it doesn't matter. Is it that? Or is it, well, come on, well, let's, uh, you know, let's, let, 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 let's go ahead. Nobody, nobody's going to know what we're doing behind these closed doors. Come on. There's nobody home. And they won't be home for days. They're away on a journey. It doesn't matter. Either way, that's still a trial. But we resist her by remaining firm in the faith, by standing in our place, knowing that the same afflictions are fully endured by your brothers in the world. But may, Yahweh, but may all merciful Yahweh himself, who has called us to his eternal glory in Yahshua Messiah, after you have suffered for a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. In Jacob 5, 10 through 11, we're told, uh, Brothers, look to the prophets who spoke in the name of Yahweh, as an example for bearing affliction and long suffering, you know, remember that consider. You know, we look at them, but consider, really look at it, really consider. Uh, you know, go back and, 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 and look at what that word consider means. As an example for bearing afflictions. 
Behold, we were regard as blessed, we regard as blessed those who endure. You have heard the patience of Eob, his perseverance, and have seen the ultimate result of Yahweh, that Yahweh is very compassionate and merciful. During the period of history called the Dark Ages, knowledge was greatly suppressed. Millions of books were burned and laws were passed to keep anyone from ever owning a Bible. If a person was found to be with the Bible, they were punished according to the laws governing the territory where they lived. Depending on the laws, uh, depending on the laws, those who refused to submit were either put to death, imprisoned, or had their homes and belongings confiscated. And we see that a lot with the Crusades. All of this horror was part of the plan of the gods to completely erase the memory of Yahweh's name and the name of His house, the house of Yahweh. They were successful in their efforts. The house of Yahweh. They were successful in their efforts because almost 1,900 years, for almost 1,900 years. Yahweh's name had been hidden from the, even the most learned Bible scholars and most certainly from the people. Today, anyone who would call on Yahweh's name as he commands is scorned, ridiculed, and listed as dangerous by the government, the churches, and the media. So with that, men, we'll stop here. It went a couple of minutes over, but we're on page 221. We'll pick up here next week with Why the Holocaust in this Present Century, Prophecy, the House of Yahweh of the Last Days, to be established in the last days. May Yahweh be with you and bless you, man. And uh, may Yahweh bless your work week. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Great and merciful living Father, whose holy and righteous name is Yahweh. Father, once again, this is your servant, Kohan Priya Hawkins, Father, along with the men of your house, Father, asking permission to come before you in unity, Father Yahweh, with the body of priests or a pastor and overseer of the Greek Khan Yestral Hawkins and through the authority of your Son, Yeshua Messiah. And Father, we do thank you again for this class and the opportunity to study, Father Yahweh, and to, and to rehearse these things, Father Yahweh, and to have these things brought back to, our, to the forefront of our minds, Father, so that we can have these things firmly established in our minds. And we pray, Father, that as we go forth this week, that you would continue to watch over your people, Father Yahweh, that you would bless us, Father, in our efforts and in, in overcoming sin, Father, so we can take on your perfect righteous character just as Yahshua did and be counted worthy to serve you and your people and one another forever. We pray for your continued protection and guidance, Father. We do, do pray for those who are sick and afflicted. May you uh, strengthen them, Father Yahweh, from the oldest to the youngest. Heal them, Father, from the afflictions that they're having and the suffering at this time. And, and, and bring your people, Father Yahweh, to perfect health, Father, so that we can all stand in our place, Father, and, and rejoice greatly before you and, and, and practice, Father Yahweh, serving you and one another. We also pray for those who are uh, uh, incarcerated, Father Yahweh, are being withheld uh, by, uh, by governmental systems or the prison systems, Father. May you strengthen them and guide them and comfort them as well, Father, knowing that one day soon we will all be gathered together physically in one body, all at your great house here at Abel. And Father, we do love you and do praise you. We thank you for everything that you've given to us and pray that you continue to watch over us and bless us this day. We do ask these things, Father Yahweh, in unity with the body of priests and the seed of the witness of Israel and through Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah.